so our first speaker will be uh, Mine Yildirim. Um, Mine uh, is a human rights law researcher focusing on freedom of thought, religion, and conscience. Uh, she is the director of the Norwegian Helsinki Committee's uh, Freedom of Belief project. Uh, she is also a member of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, uh, Office for Democratic Institutions and Human Rights Panel of Experts on Freedom of Religion or Belief. Uh, she is one of the uh, co-authors of the report uh, Conscientious Objection to Military Service in Turkey, which will be out very soon. And in this pre presentation, she will, she will uh, share from the findings of this report as well as their recommendations. Uh, Mine, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Um, this is an international event. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, <laughs> everyone. It, it's my pleasure to join you uh, today. And many thanks to the organizers for inviting me to this um, uh, really promising event. And uh, as, as some mentioned, uh, my presentation will focus on the not yet published, but almost there <laughs> report, which we are hoping will be <laughs> made public uh, next week. Uh, that was initiated by the Association for Conscientious Objection in Turkey. Uh, and as Semih mentioned, uh, I'm actually one of the co-authors. We um, drafted this report together with uh, Hülya Uçpınar, uh, whose expertise was uh, extremely valuable uh, for this report. And um, I understand I have only 12 minutes, so I will just <laughs> start immediately and I will share my uh, screen with you. This uh, presentation, uh, will focus on, very briefly on international standards on uh, conscientious objection to military service, but that will be very brief because I want to use my time to focus on the situation in Turkey. And I'll look at uh, Turkey's inter uh, international human rights obligations and national uh, legal framework, and then uh, look at how conscientious objectors are affected by the restrictions in Turkey or the non-recognition of this right. And um, look at the, some of the key findings uh, of the report and um, yeah, just present the, uh, the recommendations. Um, as I'm sure many of you know, the right to conscientious objection to military service um, has been recognized as a human right, but this recognition has been a, a progressive one. And um, it is uh, protected under the right or the freedom of uh, thought, conscience, and religion, which is set out in the Article 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, but also same article in the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. And of course, the European Convention on Human Rights um, protects this right uh, under Article 9. Um, already early on, the Human Rights Committee, which is the author, which has the authority to interpret the ICCPR, already in its general comment on uh, Article 18, the committee had said that the covenant does not explicitly refer to a right to conscientious objection. But the committee believes that such a right can be derived from Article 18, in as much as this obligation to use lethal force may seriously conflict with the freedom of conscience and the right to manifest one's religion or belief. Uh, this was an early, early on uh, interpretation, but it, the committee had a chance to um, evolve um, its interpretation and in in Yoon et al. versus Republic of Korea, the Human Rights Committee considered the question whether the right to conscientious objection to military service was a right under Article 18, or, there, or whether such a claim could be made only in those states where such a right was recognized. But it, um, the committee uh, considered the claims solely under Article 18 and found that um, 
in this case, the state had failed to show any disadvantage to itself if the applicant's rights to conscientious objection to military service was re respected. So uh, this was a, a very important um, opinion of the Human Rights Committee, uh, and which was then um, also affirmed in a number of other opinions uh, in um, communications coming from South Korea and also other, other countries, including Turkey. And uh, with regard to the recognition of this right under the Council of Europe human rights system, this came a bit later. So the European Court of Human Rights uh, followed the Human Rights Committee. We can definitely say that. Sorry. Um, and in the in another important case, Bayatian versus Armenia, the European Court of Human Rights recognized that any system um, recognized that um, that the ECHR held that a conscientious objector's failure to report for military service may be a manifestation of his religious beliefs and his ensuing conviction for draft evasion uh, may amount to an interference with his freedom to manifest his religion as guaranteed under Article 9.1. And this was the case of uh, Jehovah's Witness. So it refers referred to religion, but later on in other cases, the, the European Court of Human Rights also recognized applications uh, of pacifist and anti-militarist conscientious objectors. So also recognized the rights um, based on um, philosophical views. Uh, excuse me. Sorry. Mine. Uh... I think there's a slight problem with your microphone. Perhaps your body is touching the microphone and it's making this uh, whooshing sound. Uh, could you make sure you're not touching the microphone uh, as you speak? Okay, is this better? Uh, right is now, yes. It, it, hap it happens sometimes, but it's... Oh, right, okay. Okay, uh, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll be careful. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how it's happening, but let's see. Yeah, Please, okay. Uh, Please uh, warn me again if it continues. I'll I'll change. Try to change different things. Sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay, thank you. No worries. Sorry about that. Uh, so, so Turkey has uh, significant international human rights obligations as a party to the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and its first protocol, and also the European Convention on Human Rights. And Turkey's um, uh, non-recognition of the right to conscientious objection has been considered in um, periodic reports, in the consideration of the periodic reports under UN treaty bodies, and also the universal uh, periodic review, and in the um, in a communication at Atasoy and Sarkut versus Turkey, the Human Rights Committee held that um, Turkey violated Article um, 18. And also in uh, opinions, the, the UN Working Group on Arbitrary Detention um, considered the cases of Ülke and Sauda and uh, issued its opinion. So Turkey has been the subject uh, of a number of different UN uh, human rights bodies. Um, and uh, under the Council of Europe, uh, especially the Ülke group of cases, which relates to um, applications made by conscientious objectors of different backgrounds, so Jehovah's Witnesses, but also uh, pacifist uh, conscientious objectors. And the, the Council of Europe as Committee of Ministers considers all of these cases uh, under Ülke group of cases under enhanced uh, supervision. Uh, we might come back to this later. And uh, the European Court of Human Rights has found, uh, has four key findings in relation to these um, cases under Ülke um, group. First, it found that there's a lack of sufficient legal framework for those who refuse to wear uniform and uh, or perform military service on grounds of conscientious conscience or religion. And then suing interminable series of prosecutions and convictions are disproportionate to the aim of ensuring the performance of military service. So this one relates uh, more to Ülke, I suppose. 
Um, and in the aggregate, the acts concerned uh, constitute inhuman and degrading treatment within the meaning of Article 3. So there was a, um, a violation of uh, Article 3. And the second uh, key finding uh, relates to lack of an effective and accessible procedure in Turkey, which would have enabled conscientious objectors to have established whether they were entitled to conscientious objection status uh, was a violation of Article 9. Uh, and thirdly, the absence, the system of compulsory uh, military service in Turkey imposes on citizens an obligation which may have serious consequences for conscientious objectors. It does not allow any exemptions on grounds of conscience and gives rise to the imposition of heavy criminal penalties. Thus, the interference in question originates not only from the multiple convictions of the applicants, but also from the absence of an alternative service. And lastly, uh, this relates to the um, cases of a num on only some of the some of the conscientious objectors. The trial and conviction of civilian conscientious objectors by military courts constitutes a violation of Article uh, Six One, so the right to fair trial. You, you can definitely read more uh, details uh, of these in the upcoming report. So briefly, uh, let's look at the uh, national legal framework. Uh, the uh, constitution protects the right to freedom of uh, religion and conscience. Uh, and article 72, which is um, a key article uh, refers to national service and says that national service is the right and duty of, of every Turk. And the manner in which this service shall be performed or considered as performed either in the armed forces or in public service shall be regulated by law. So as we can see, military service uh, as such is not considered um, national service. So it, it refers also to uh, public service. So under the constitution, military service is not compulsory. Um, and Article 10 uh, protects equality before the law. And Article 90 is also quite important because it refers to the status of international human rights treaties. So where there is a, a conflict between uh, a national uh, provision uh, in legislation, where this conflicts with uh, international human rights treaties, which Turkey has ratified, the human rights treaties uh, will supersede. Uh, when we look at the national, um, the we, when we look at the legislation, uh, the law on conscription, which was actually relatively recently changed in 2019, um, refers to compulsory uh, military service. Uh, and uh, you will read in the report that it makes uh, the military service considerably uh, shorter and also uh, provides um, the shortened military service uh, by payment. So this is often uh, indicated by the national authorities as a solution to uh, conscientious objection, conscious, conscientious objectors. Um, but uh, of course, uh, it doesn't provide um, it doesn't provide uh, an effective remedy to the plight of uh, conscientious objectors. And then it, the military criminal code uh, also provides uh, very important um, provisions which uh, actually constitute the basis of uh, the punitive, many punitive measures uh, that uh, we will refer to. And under, under Article uh, 45, there is a specific uh, provision which says that uh, actions based on conscience or religion uh, may, not be, um, sh may not be shown as uh, an excuse for, and cannot be accepted um, as an excuse and may not uh, exempt one from ensuing uh, punitive measures, which is um, contrary to Article 24, uh, um, of the constitution. 
So the law on conscription sets forth the manner in which uh, evaders and deserters will be tracked and the administrative fines that are applicable to them. And once the administrative monetary fine is final, criminal proceedings uh, are initiated under the military criminal law. Um, so next, I will not try to explain this uh, very complicated but perfect chart, uh, which outlines how this uh, system actually works, how um, the punitive measures work and the different um, uh, criminal procedure and um, all the way to the European Court of Human Rights. Uh, instead, uh, I would like to share with you how this process actually impacts, uh, uh, has impacted one of the conscientious objectors, which um, the Association for Conscientious Objection interviewed. So uh, KMD, a conscientious objector since 2018, is a journalist who frequently travels for work. And over the course of 2016 and 2021, he was apprehended on account of being a draft Mine, evader. Mine, can you speak a little bit slower because um, the interpretation cannot follow you, I guess. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry. Um, I'm already, I've already uh, used more time <laughs> than I'm allowed to. So, but... Um, so he has been apprehended on account of being a draft evader uh, approximately 50 times during travel for work or at work. And on two occasions, uh, he was apprehended whilst staying at hotels. So he tries to refrain from staying at hotels as a result. He has been issued an administrative fine of 4,305 Turkish liras following an apprehension for being a draft evader in 2016. And then 11 criminal cases were initiated against him after the administrative monetary fines became final. He was acquitted on one of them in 2019. However, the prosecutor appealed against this verdict and the case is still pending. And in another case, he was given four months imprisonment but then this was converted to a judicial fine. And in the rest of the, um, the cases uh, against him, so in the nine out of 11, um, they are pending and an individual application to the constitutional court uh, is pending. So you, will, you see how uh, this complex um, and ongoing uh, process of uh, punitive measures. Um, there are also, so primarily uh, the non-recognition of the rights to conscientious objection to military service impacts uh, one's right to freedom of thought and conscience and religion. But there are also other restrictions on other human rights. So the the um, reports provi uh, will provide uh, the details for this, but I will just provide the headlines here. For example, participation in public affairs and the right to vote, because immediately uh, when a conscientious objector is called uh, for um, the military service and, and when they don't submit or when the, they become a deserter, their status in law changes. And in, suddenly, all of a sudden, they are uh, they are an evader, a draft evader or a deserter. And that changes. Uh, how they can um, exercise other rights. So for example, participation in public affairs uh, and the right to vote, freedom of movement, the right to education and opportunity to earn one's living. Um, all of these rights can be restricted as a result. Oops. So some of the key findings of the report are that the national policy remains opposed to the recognition of the right to conscientious objection to military service. It is not on the agenda of uh, the national authorities. Uh, and the punitive measures continue. Um, and the changes that have come mostly uh, as a 
well, probably attributable to the international human rights mechanisms and um, maybe more so to the European Court of Human Rights findings uh, only had impact on procedural issues. So the impact has been quite limited and interference in a wide range of human rights uh, continue. Um, and international human rights mechanisms, they, they continue to be uh, very important for the, uh, the continued advocacy for freedom, uh, for the right to conscientious objection to military service in Turkey, because we could also say, uh, arguably, they are the ones which are most uh, active, given that the government's um, approach is very um, very distant to this idea at the moment, but um, there is a lack of implementation that is also continues to be true. And the domestic remedies um, remain ineffective because this right uh, is not recognized. So the report um, has concrete uh, recommendations on, on a number of, um, to a number of um, actors. Uh, first of all, to the Turkish uh, authorities, it recommends that conscientious objection to military service be recognized as a constitutional right without delay to ensure that legislation um, does not come into conflict with other legal regulations um, and that all criminal proceedings against conscientious objectors are ended and compensation is provided and all convictions regarding conscientious objection in the criminal records uh, for disobedience, draft evasion, desertion, public statements are expunged. And that the Constitutional Court follows the European Court of Human Rights jurisprudence. There are more than 40 applications, individual applications pending with the Constitutional Court and uh, one of the applications has been referred to the plenary, but uh, it's still pending, uh, no decision or no, no application uh, resulted in a finding of uh, violation uh, of Article 24. Uh, um, so we, it, it is recommended that the Constitutional Court um, decides on these applications without delay in line with the European Court of Human Rights um, jurisprudence and examines interim measures in detail and treats the issue in a manner that would prevent further harm to conscientious objectors. Uh, and that finally, international human rights compliance control mechanisms keep compliance control of this right uh, on relevant agenda, including with the Committee of Ministers the Human Rights Committee and UN Special Procedures and the Universal Periodic Review. Thank you so much for your attention. And again, I apologize for uh, going over time, but the report is very comprehensive. Um, and yeah, this seemed really important. Thank you.